If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. First of all, it's, it's great to see all of you here. Uh, it is, and uh, you know, it's a really, you know, special day and a special event for all of us. Uh, most of you know me. If you don't know me, you probably have guessed that I'm, uh, I'm Debbie's husband. Uh, actually, I'm. Uh, <laughs> Most community activities, uh, that's the way to go. I think most people don't know my name. I, I'm great. <laughs> this is a really an exciting and a proud day for me. And uh, I think, of course, for Debbie, but for many of us in the audience, this is a very exciting day. And, but the illustrator of this wonderful book is here, too, Mara Magellan. The, um, yeah. <laughs> Mara! Give you an idea of the effort that it takes. And that's one of the things I learned being a husband of a children's book writer. This is hard, hard work. And it is takes an incredible amount of perseverance. And so this is a question for the younger in the audience. How long do you think Miss Debbie has been a writer? You want to guess? Anybody want to guess? One year? Two years? Three years? Twenty. <laughs> so don't look too high. I'm not even that old. <laughs> well, in any case, it is, I thought it was seven, but I was reminded this morning that it's been nine years that Debbie has been working on children's wow. book. Wow. And then, and I think this is a positive indication of perseverance, how many books have been published? This is the first one. <laughs> I was sort of thinking about it, and again, sort of appearing to the younger audience. Just imagine that you're at school, and you write a story, or you write an essay, or you teach it. And you go to the teacher, you're very excited about it, and the teacher looks at it and says, now, let's write again. And you do this the next month, write a great story. You go to the teacher, the teacher looks at it, now, nah, not good enough. And that was the way for Miss Debbie. She tried and tried, and for nine years, so just think, nine years from now, you would be going to Mass. <laughs> okay, <laughs> by going to Mass, and you know, after nine years of trying, every month, go with a wonderful story. You go to the teacher, and the teacher looks at it, now, nah, now, nah, not good enough. Then, you We're go to Mass on your e-bike. You've got your story, and you have a special feeling about the story, and you don't really, really dare to hope. But you go to there, the teacher, give it to the teacher, the teacher looks at it, and you just feel it's going to be, nah, not good enough. But this time, the teacher looks at it, looks at it, and says, this is great. And can you imagine, can you imagine how exciting it is? And this is the way that I feel, this is the way that Debbie feels, and this is the way that a lot of the audience feels. This is really, really a very exciting event for us. But let me get back to the launch of If I Could. I'd like to thank everybody who is here. And I'd sort of, on behalf of Debbie, uh, sort of Debbie Lomenzo, everybody who's been involved in this book writing process. I have, you know, for nine years, I have heard all the stories. <laughs> I've repeat them. But I'm not the only one. Many of you have been a really, really important uh, you know, uh, part of this process, of, and I call it the process of perseverance, with a wonderful, wonderful process. Then I, you know, there are many of you in the audience, and we really appreciate everybody being here, but uh, we've been particularly touched by people who came from way out of town to uh, celebrate this uh, great occasion with us. And, uh, you know, and I'm sure I'm gonna miss a lot of people, uh, but I do want to sort of highlight uh, Debbie's brother, uh, Vince, and his wife, uh, Fumiko, who are back there. They came from the city. Uh, Jenna Bell, who came from New York, York. By complete surprise to all of us from Homosassa. Jane Mara, from Homosassa. Mara, who came from, um, all the way from Wisconsin. Coming from cold climates, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't like to 
believe that sole reason for coming down here was to <laughs> But in any case, I've talked enough. I'd really like to now uh, introduce you to the star of the show, my wife Debbie. Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to see you all. I'm Debbie Wanninkoff, often known as Miss Debbie, and I'm so excited that you are here for my book launch and special presentation. I want to thank you for coming. We're going to have some fun today. <laughs> if you're sitting in the second row, I want to hear your voices. If you're here, sing. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Now it's my turn. Let's see if I can do this. Happy, happy, ha happy day. I'm so glad you're here. Hooray. Let's sing and share and have some fun. Let's celebrate with everyone. Happy, happy, happy day. I'm so glad you're here. Hooray. Your turn. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Thank you, that was beautiful. <laughs> Have you ever been really, really, really excited about something? Like your birthday or a vacation or a trip to Disney? Well, today I am really, really, really excited to show you my very first published children's book. If I could. <laughs> if I could, Magical Wishes for a Child by Debbie Wanningkoff, illustrations by Mauro Magellan. As Rick mentioned, I've been writing children's books for over nine years, and it's been a dream of mine to be a published author, and I'm so happy that my dream has come true. But I have to tell you, it took a lot of hard work. <laughs> I'll bet you know something about children's books. Where are all the children? The person who writes the book is called can someone call out? The author. Oh, thank you, Susie. The author. And I, Debbie Wanninkoff, am the author of If I Could. I am an author and a teacher and a violinist and a road safety advocate and, most importantly, a mom. I love to put on special presentations for Peace Day and Earth Day every year, too. One of my fun things. OK, next question. The person who draws or paints the pictures in a book is called? I heard it. Illustrator. Would you like to meet the illustrator? Yes. Introducing Mr. Mauro Magellan. <laughs> I have a real soft voice, so I'm a soft-spoken guy. First of all, I'm wearing a wool hat in Miami. <laughs> and um, when Debbie called me, she wanted a splashy watercolor, which is a, a legitimate artist. I'm not that guy. You know, I, I'm an illustrator, and I, wanted to, I had to use my style because I'm helpless to do anything else. And she accepted it. And I thought, well, this is going to be fun, because if I can if I can do it like I want to do it, and then it's going to mean something. It's going to mean something to me. It's going to mean something to her. So that's what happened. And um, I hope you all can, can buy her book. It's really fun. It's easy to read. You don't have to be smart, because I know I'm not. So 
<laughs> I didn't have to look up one word. <laughs> so Mr. Morrow came all the way from Wisconsin. How far is that, Mr. Morrow? Oh, about a thousand four hundred something odd miles. You didn't walk, did you? Uh, uh, no, yeah, I rode my bike. <laughs> I'm actually from here, but um, like I say, my wife took my name, but I took her family, so I'm up there. I live on a farm. Thank you, Mr. Morrow. I could have kept going. <laughs> so, did you know that most children's picture books are for ages three through eight? But this book is for ages three through 108. <laughs> it's for everyone who is young at heart and childlike. And I hope we all have a little bit of that in us. I got the idea from this for this book from a friend. She wrote me a text and she said, Debbie, if I could, I would send you a field of sunflowers. Love, Janet. Wow, I was just overcome with emotion and, and awestruck thinking about this magical gift arriving at my doorstep. It really touched me. Months later, I woke up in the middle of the night with the burning feeling that I needed to write a story or a poem about magical gifts for a child. I would use Janet's beautiful idea to express the love of a mother, a father, a caregiver for a precious child. The thoughts of my heart came pouring out onto the page, and my first draft was soon finished. Next. I took my story to my children's book critique groups. Now a critique group listens to your story and helps you to make it better. And thank you, my critique group here in Miami. My leader, Miss Sylvia Lopez, who is here today, said, Debbie, I think you have found your voice in this book. Wow, I thought again, maybe I have. And then as writers do, I revised, revised, revised. Anybody know what that means? Come on, somebody knows that. <laughs> it means I wrote the story over and over and over again until the words seemed just right. So before I read the story, I would like to turn things over to Mr. Morrow. Uh, you know what I do have on the stand here are some of your, your drawings. Oh, okay. So we'll you can that. show um, how you start your illustration. No, these illustrations I do with pencil. As you can see, they're basically a pencil drawing, and uh, you have to use good pencils. It's a blast. It's, it's, I love doing this because I can relax. I don't have to look at a computer. Think about it. <laughs> this is Suzette. And I love pencil drawings. No, this, this is actually a Skylark, which is native of Europe. She did mention Skylark, and I had to use a Skylark. I couldn't use just a, like a lark. You know, it had to be a European. Aha, there's a surfer girl. And you, as you can see, when you see the book, I just have the surfer girl, and then I draw the dolphin separately. I like to do that because when you do illustrations, you always have changes. And instead of going and doing, because this takes a long time to do, instead of doing everything over, I can move it around. And I love scanning it into the computer because you can change colors, you can, you can have fun with backgrounds. I do watercolor splashes. I scan that in and I have my own backgrounds. And you can reuse backgrounds. Oh, there it is. I look very friendly there. <laughs> Start with a piece of paper. This book is a badger. I did this for a Chinese dairy company, go figure, in Wisconsin. If, if you know about Wisconsin, we're all about the cheese and milk and yogurt and all that stuff. And this was a Chinese company, and they wanted a badger because Wisconsin is the badger state. I actually caught a badger not too long ago in my life trap. It was scary. You're not allowed to taunt him. You can't tease a badger. It's, it's against the law. <laughs> Who's going to tease a badger? <laughs> and then it starts with a lot of ideas. This, 
this is the original idea of my character, a Louis. That's why I'm wearing the red hat and, and the jeans that I've outgrown. <laughs> and these are my pencils. You just have to have a whole bunch of grades to get the, the texture right. And then this is a book I did for Marta. And as you can see, it's not done. And you have to, for example, she wanted um, dragonfly fast food. And well, of course, you know, I think of uh, that Scottish restaurant, McDonald's. <laughs> and that's how that kind of happened. Do you want fries? Well, the caption is, do you want flies with that? You know, because I, I, was that your cleverness or was that mine? <laughs> it was my cleverness? Yeah, go figure. Um, this is one of my favorite drawings. I really like this little thing here. This is from Debbie's book. And she wanted wings, uh, wondrous wings. And, and this little thing just came out. And, and it works so well. Her looking back is what I wanted. Now, to be honest, this little thing just came out. And, and it works so well. Her looking back is what I wanted. Now, to be honest with you, I don't do people well. I do animals. And, and my, my big illustration jobs are flowers, trees, wildlife. So this was kind of new, and drawing humans. And I really began to like it, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Power to the humans. <laughs> and there's a the little surfer girl again with the separation. I thought she was cute. I like her suit, too. I designed it. <laughs> with an illustrator, you can design a lot of stuff. And there she is, completed. That was fun. In fact, I had that dolphin face in so many ways until I finally settled. That's what I love about the separation. And with, with computers and really good scanners, it's really kind of fun. It makes illustrating a little different. You're not, you're not set, you know, a lot of times when you have to do a painting and it's not perfect, well, okay, too bad, that's it. You know, I, I have a lot of those, a lot of regret. <laughs> I like this little kid, too. He was originally a Native American boy. But the, we took it to the council in Wisconsin uh, and Pennsylvania. And, and they were like, well, what Native? And it, it's a big problem. It, anybody ever, you know, American Girl dolls? Have you ever heard of those or had them? Uh, they were actually made in Madison, Wisconsin for a while. And they wanted a Native American girl. And it took them five years to get get it all together for all the tribes to approve it. So it was a chore. I'm, I'm not 100% Native American. I, I, like, I think I like all these drawings. Is, is, that, is that wrong? Is that conceited? But this one had to illustrate song, rainbow, and butterflies. So well, there you go. You know? And see those um, metal arcs? I used them on another page, so I didn't have to draw them. <laughs> and um, there they are. You see, there they are. I rearranged them so you wouldn't know, but now I told you. <laughs> Busted. I like this one a lot. When I first drew this one, I drew it completely horrible. And I didn't even notice it. And Debbie goes, well, I think that woman looks weird. Her arm is in the wrong place. And it was. It was like coming out of her shoulder. <laughs> Again, inexperienced with humans. And Deb pointed out to me, and I went, oh my gosh, I'm glad you got that. She was apologetic, but it's like, no, thank you. <laughs> that would have been embarrassing. I would have been like, you know, don't look at that. And, well, there I am with another hat. <laughs> That's it. If I Could, Magical Wishes for a Child by Debbie Wanenkopf, illustrations by Mauro Magellan. It's dedicated to Patrick, Suzette, and my husband, Rick. If I could, I would give you a field of sparkling sunflowers to smile on you all day. If I could, I would give you a flock of silver skylarks to sing your favorite song. 
If I could, I would give you a radiant rainbow to ride toward your dreams. If I could, I would give you a dazzling dolphin to dance with you on waves. If I could, I would give you a whispering waterfall to wash away your worries. If I could, I would give you a shimmering star to shine on you all night. If I could, I would give you wondrous wings to whisk you to adventure. If I could, I would give you a magical moonbeam to light your way back home. Right now, I give you a smile as bright as a sunbeam, a hug as huge as an ocean, a kiss as soft as a butterfly, a song as beautiful as spring. Because I love you always. And there we are. <laughs> Thank you for being good listeners. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed the story. Do you have any questions? Anyone have any questions? Uh, it depends. First you start with sketching it out, and then if it's OK, and then you transfer it uh, on a light table to a nice piece of paper, and then I shade it. That takes about an hour to two hours, sometimes longer. And then I put it under the uh, computer, and I have to cut away everything to have a transparent background. Then I start adding the color with transparent like colors, and that's kind of fun. And, and then it's, uh, that takes about another hour or two, depending on the uh, complexity. And then you work on the background. See, some of the backgrounds, if you notice, they were actually photographs that I colored up. Not all of them, just a few, because the, the Wanderer Swings one, I, I just wasn't about to draw the world. You know, like uh, Stephen Wright said, it's a small world, but I don't want to paint it. So you know, so I didn't. Oh, interacting with the author. Oh my God, working with this woman, illustrators run the other way. <laughs> what? No, no, I'm kidding. And she wants to know if you like to play with dandelions too. Oh, I love dandelions. By the way, kids, if you love dandelions, there's a seed company that actually have pink dandelions. Whoa. Think about it. Um, Debbie, I wanted to ask, what's your, what ended up being your favorite spread in the book? Your favorite page? Do you have one? And is there also, if there was something you needed to cut out that you, you missed, or how that process looked? Well, I guess my favorite is Patrick and the sunflowers and Suzette and the skylark. So there's two already. But the moonbeam when they're coming home, that's uh, really touching to me. Yeah. We had to draw Patrick a bunch of times for her to be happy. And I was happy to do it. It was because it needed to be. It needed to be. And I was like, whatever it takes. All part of a critique group. So. We're very proud of you. Is that critic group or critique group? Yeah. <laughs> Your choice. <laughs> so my question is how I remember exactly when you brought this to the group and it, I was in awe. And I've heard and read many of your stories before. So my question is how the inspiration for this particular story came about. Was it something that just came to you? Um, was something that you thought about? Was it a process? It was the text I got from my friend Janet um, saying, if I could, I would send you a field of sunflowers, because she knew Patrick loved sunflowers. And that's how it all started. Yeah. Are you guys going to hang out with the book? We finish, we'll be selling the books, OK?
My question is, when are you coming to read this to my second graders? Yeah. <laughs> Anytime you want, my friend. Anytime. <laughs> Kids that know people that know Spanish, it'll be wonderful. What a great I'm, idea. I'm thinking Which about that. Know, um, English will be friends with this. Actually, um, in Spanish, it'll be wonderful. Okay, I'm that. thinking about that. I really yes. am. Yeah. <laughs> Any Portuguese translators in here? Get you contract signs. <laughs> Okay, we need to practice a little. Can you be my echo? So if I say cafe con leche, you say. Oh, but if I say arroz con pollo, you say. Arroz con pollo. And if I say blueberry pie. Blueberry pie. Blueberry pie. Blueberry pie. We're ready. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands and sing. You can sing too. If you're happy and you know it, wiggle your nose. If you're happy and you know it, wiggle your nose. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, wiggle your nose. If you're happy and you know it, wiggle your toes. If you're happy and you know it, wiggle your toes. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, wiggle your toes. Here it comes. If you're happy and you know it, say blueberry pie. Blueberry pie. If you're happy and you know it, say blueberry pie. blueberry pie. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, say blueberry pie. <laughs> Oh, and now what you've been waiting for. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. hooray. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. hooray. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. hooray. You guys are good. You're good. OK, everybody still looks cheerful and attentive. and. Ah, thank you, children. I, I have some special thank yous that I would like to read to Janet Thomas, who ignited the idea for this book, to my book mentor, Ruth Vanderzee, to Sylvia Lopez and Marta Magellan and my Miami critique groups, and for Lana and Aisha. And where's Mr. Fig? Oh, Mr. Fig is right there. Okay. <laughs> To my tech guide, Jana Pell. Jana, stand up. <laughs> to Mr. Morrow, illustrator extraordinaire, stand up, Mr. Morrow. <laughs> to my family and friends. To my husband, Rick. <laughs> to my kids, Patrick and Suzette, who taught me a lot about love. I would also like to thank Anna and Roxy and Judy from the Community Center, who have been very supportive and enthusiastic about this event. Thank you to Terry for filming. Thank you to my hometown, Key Biscayne. <laughs> to all the wonderful people who have been a part of my family's life for over 30 years, thank you so much. And thank you for those who traveled from afar, Maro and my brother and my sister-in-law and Jana and Jane. And thank you for everyone for being here. <laughs> OK. The thing about a raffle is that not everybody will win a prize, but everybody will get a prize in the end. Because out in the hallway where we have the treats, there are some special little gifts for everyone. So this raffle has a theme. <laughs> Who can say it? Alliteration. Alliteration. Does anybody know what it means? No idea. <laughs> well, alliteration has to do with beginning sounds. So if I say, kind kangaroos share crunchy carrots. Did you hear the cuss sound? That's an alliteration. If I say, 
real robots don't eat raisins. Did you hear the r sound? Yeah, that's an alliteration. Happy hamsters shout hooray. That's an alliteration. So the book comes with the coloring book, and the alliterations are highlighted. So I'm going to ask for you to look at your ticket if you got one. Are there any children who did not get a ticket? I mean, everybody was supposed to get one, but. OK, so if, if your ticket says sparkling sunflowers, please stand up. Aww. <laughs> Silver skylarks, that's the next one. Does anyone have a ticket? <gasps> Oh, you get, you get to pick a prize. Radiant Rainbow. Anyone have that ticket that says Radiant Rainbow? Oh, there we go. <laughs> These prizes are all custom made by Miss Debbie. The next one is Dazzling Dolphin. Da, da, da. Anybody have that on their ticket? Dazzling Dolphin. Some people took tickets and just went to the beach, so they might not be here. <laughs> OK, we'll go to Whispering Waterfall. Whispering Waterfall. Oh, OK. OK, the next one is Shimmering Shine. It has to say the words, shimmering, shine. Oh, right up here, Miss Coconut. <laughs> Wondrous wings. Wondrous wings. Ah, ha, ha, back there. <laughs> ah, Sizzy. <laughs> and the last one is magical moonbeam. If you have magical moonbeam, raise your hand or stand up. Ah. <laughs> ah. If you did not get a prize, out at the treat table are some Planet Earth peace pins. Please take one and some shiny star stickers. Please take one. Please check out the information on the back table. If you would like to purchase, if I could, it's in a bundle, it's a bag, and it's the soft cover, and it is a coloring book, and it is crayons, and then the tote bag, and it is for sale for $18. And also, Mr. Morrow has some of his special books at the back table, Felicia and the Rat, Louie and that Dog, and they come with a CD, and they are for sale for $15. You get the book and the CD. And Mr. Morrow and I will sign the book for you. <laughs> also at the back table is information about the hardcovers. It's like a pre-order that you can do because they haven't come in yet. If our book has touched your heart, we would like to hear from you. On the back of my bookmark is my email and my website. And let us know how the book touched you if you have some time to do that. Friends, this is the book of my heart. It's just my start. More books to come. And I'll keep you posted on that. So, <laughs> so enjoy the treats and the water, which are out in the hallway. There are um, water bottles uh, that I would like you, please, if you take one, to write your name on it or have your parent write your name on it. Refill it three times before you recycle it. Thank you for taking care of our planet. <laughs> Keep believing in magic. Magic and love are everywhere. And don't forget to read every day Books can take you to magical places near and far away. Mr. Morrow, come on up. Thank you so much for being here today, everyone. You can turn the lights back on.
Thank you. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands.